starting, at which point the stream will be starting. That's not very... Hello and welcome to the stream. Today's pre-stream chatter was me just pointing out that the stream would be starting in a few seconds. Okay, so we're going to continue from last time. Uh, we were trying to get um, Maxima to plot and otherwise analyze the number of COVID deaths around the world. <coughs> and you're going to have to add one to that after the end of today, because I'm clearly a goner. Um, actually, more than one, because a lot of people are dying. It is a little bit grisly, but uh, this is, again, um, I'm using it more as data. I'm not thinking of them as individuals, because that would be sad. Um, okay, so... Um, so what we did previously is we've done quite a bit of this, and we're trying to find a... Um, a way to genericize, if, you, if you're given a list at a, a number n, find the best nth degree polynomial that matches that list. And we got as far as trying to write this, but it didn't work. So you would think that we would now continue with this, but of course we won't. Uh, because one thing I actually wanted to do earlier that I'd forgotten about is um, looking at the number of deaths, that, that works. Um, but we, and then we, sorry, try, and then trying to make a linear function out of it. Um, I get, we did do that, right? Yeah, we must have done that. Um, maybe not. We did a fourth degree polynomial and we did a first degree polynomial. Uh, we apparently never did a, uh, um, a simple linear polynomial. Um, but the point, um, or something, is that we want to see if we can fit it to a logarithm. That because this, some people say this data is exponential, which it kind of is. Um, so what we want to do here is, let's see, L squares estimates. Uh, okay. I have no idea where all this crap is coming from. I have no memory. Okay. Um, so T1047 is our, I think we still have the session up and running. So T1047 is our, uh, no we do not, because I restarted it to do something different. So uh, let's do this. I could of course include the file, uh, but at right now I'm trying to do this a little bit differently um, without doing the plots. And I kind of wish I'd suppressed that output, but it's just ugly. And then, um, so let's just call this T1548 here. And, well, okay, we'll actually, we'll actually continue to use T1047. So this will be, so this is the matrix that basically shows us the day number followed by the number of cumulative deaths. Day number, number of cumulative deaths. This is the thing that we can regress on. Uh, now to regress, and we'll call this T1548 because we don't have a name for it, L squares estimates, and this is one of the cool properties that I, I'm sure you could do with Mathematica as well. That's the list we want to approximate. X and Y are the two variables. Uh, but here's where it gets interesting. We're going to say log of Y equals A times X plus B, and A and B are our coefficients. So if this works correctly, this should give us um, an exponential approximation to the data. Let's see what happens. Uh huh, and it, it, we got log zero, which is um, which is bad. Uh, the other thing we I kind of wanted to do is um, we could very easily go to this list and select everything that is not zero, but I would like to sort of preserve the day number. In other words, I would like to get the uh, list that starts with 12 comma 1 and goes up to 104, 108, 192. And I want to do it without having to uh, necessarily count, just say use the first 12 elements. So we're going to use a, uh, the type of select function um, that will let us choose in a matrix, a matrix select function that will let us choose all the elements where the second element is not 0. At least I hope that's what we're going to be able to do because that is what I would what I would like to do. So we do have uh, T1047 here, and here we're going to create um, a matrix that's smaller than 10 T47 um, and goes from you know 12 comma 1 to 104 comma 108 1 2. 
And again, I, I really need to watch yesterday's video because I could have sworn I did this as well. Um, but anyway, I think in mathematical we call it select. Um, I don't think that's what... Hello! Uh, hello, hello, hello. Well, actually, I just came back. And I think you know that because I hope you have your alerts set. Uh, get some rest and go outside too. Yeah, there you go. Um, I'm in the high risk category of death. So I want to kind of finish this up before I die, if that's okay. And even if it's not okay. Um, so I need, I need the function that lets me select something from a, uh, this, in this case it's a matrix. Um, uh, let's see, plot 2D, make list, fdeath, 1051, transpose. Okay. And then we will return to the, the polynomial, um, the, uh, the more generalization of the polynomial approximation. Um, you know, I think you're, you're, yeah, you know, you're right. I should. Would well, you have any suggestions for which countries I might want to visit? Um, I mean, I'm thinking China, Italy, um, maybe San Marino, Rome. That Rome area is very nice. The Vatican, San Marino, um, those countries, I think, would be very nice to visit. Uh, Israel and Turkey, those are pretty good countries, too. Um, th those are pretty good, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Jerusalem, maybe. Um, Palestine. Uh, Saudi Arabia. Some of the, uh, some of the Arab countries in that area, also. Okay. Uh, okay, now, god damn it, I've forgotten everything I learned yesterday. Um... There should be something here that talks about list functions. Um, sets. I don't. I think we actually want something a little bit heavier than sets. These are matrices. Uh, another crusade. So what? Um, what? Um, what exactly? What? What uh, viewpoint will I be uh, crucifying them on? Or sorry, crusading them on? Uh, what? What? What will I try to convince them of? Uh, dot matrices. Okay. Okay. So transpose does work. Vectors. Um, add call, add row. I'm trying to find one that lets me select certain rows from a matrix and return another matrix. Coefficient matrix. Ooh, that's interesting. Copy determinant. Determinant out. I don't know what that means. Let me see if the word condition appears here. Okay, nope, that is not. Um, nope. Nope. Aha! Uh -huh. Find all partitions that integer partitions new. Half of Jerusalem. <laughs> oh, that's evil. Um. All right. Okay, so let's look for lists here. Um, I think actually, for some reason, the list functions are actually under. They're they're sort of nested in a funny way. All right, here we go. Functions and variables for a list. Operator, append, associate, cons, copy list, create list, delete. Eighth, add cons, fifth, first, first n. Fourth, join, last, last n, length, list arithmetic, p, reduce, make list, member, pop, push, re oh no, rest of the list, reverse, reduce, I think it's going to be seventh, select, sort, nope, um, sublist, okay. Um, so now, okay, so that should be it. That sublist should be the thing I'm looking for. Um, so what I want to say here is that the second element is bigger than zero. Um, and... I could, in theory, create, do a lambda here, but I'm going to not do that because I don't really know how. Um, 
So I'm going to create a function that um, takes as input a list. So x is going to be a list, and its second element, um, no, actually it's just going to be x2 bigger than 0. Now let's see if I can actually do that. Because um, usually list uh, functions just take one element, but I think this is actually okay. This is actually acceptable. So f1555 on 4 should just, like, get be confused. Um, can? Now here, uh, which is true, by the way, just FYI, um, that is just freaking weird. Okay, that, I mean, the function is doing the right thing, but um, I don't know why it's not resolving all the way to uh, to false or, or true. Okay. Um, so what I want to do is, from 1047, select the elements where the second element is bigger than zero. In other words, the days where the number of wonderful deaths is... Ooh. Uh, oh, this, ooh, ooh, wait, 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 wait. Um, so 1047 is not a list. Okay. That's interesting. So if I do this, that's a list. Piece of crap. Um, that's a list. It has list elements. Um, so from it, I want, so wait, I should be able to apply, okay. Okay, so that's a list. I should be able to apply F1555 to it then. Good it's a list. That should work. First argument must be a list found error x1, an error. Okay. Uh, Is it a list? It's a list of lists, but still. Okay, it does not think of that as being a list. And that is not cool. Mm, I guess, is there a submat? Oh, there is a submatrix. Um, so maybe that's what I need to use, because this technically is a matrix, although really it's also a list. Uh, returns a new matrix, okay. That is not the kind of submatrix I want. Conditional submatrix. Um, okay. You know what? There might be an easier way around this. Um, transpose matrix days death. Because this definitely makes it into a matrix. Um, now the question is, if I have a matrix, can, can I convert it back to a list? Uh, mat matrix. So list P, I'm pretty sure, just tells you um, Okay, so the problem here is this matrix is not a list, but it is a list. Kind of annoying. Um... Now, is there a way to force it to think of this as being a list? Because there is a way to force it, um, to force Maxima to think of things as lists, even though they're not, but they are. Um, so, let's see if there's a way to do that. Okay. Convert. To that's not going to work. All right, it is Pomodoro time, but it's the first one, so we're going to skip it. And then the notice should come up here in a second, or maybe it won't. Um. Okay, I guess we're going to call this called casting. Um. Oh, recast. Okay, that's that's actually correct. Cast. Okay. Uh. Data types and structures. Let's 
So this maybe will have how to convert things from mm, functions and variables for okay this is all right we may actually have to go into Google Maxima convert well that's not that came up pretty quickly um args my matrix can okay. so this guy came up with a w weird way of doing it but this guy just says the args my matrix will convert a matrix to a list but now that's not quite what I want what I want is um, maxima cast matrix as list. Um, tell variable it is a list. I don't know if that's going to work. Um, so this may be, uh, we already have this, so let's just do this. Um, maxima database, which sounds like it's totally stupid, um, but it might actually be a way of telling something that it is um, a list. So let's see. Uh, property alphabetic, property bind test constant. So this should be like property list. Function declare, oh. Um, so these are the things you can declare it to be. Um, property decreasing, property even odd, property feature, feature AF. Feature is fuck, man. No. Um, features, get, integer, integer value, non-array, ooh, okay, non-array, almost, we want the opposite of that, um, okay, so what are the properties of T1047? That's not helpful. Um, so I guess set prop is what I'm okay. So I'm not looking to put data into it. I'm looking to tell it that it is a list. Oh shit. For facts. Okay, let's go back up here. We're on the right track though. The maxima database keeps track of what every variable is. Okay doesn't really tell you that but okay bind test constant okay so now can I just say declare you are now a list because I say you are now a list unknown property list so you can't do that um, assign the, to property Okay, so declare is not the way to do that, but the info list, okay. Um, so one of the properties I can't give it is that it's a list. Uh, declare, come on. Oh, well, I'm, I'm going the wrong way. Okay, hang on. I was going the wrong way. I have no idea what the hell I'm doing anymore. All right, so here we're going to look for the word list. Uh, declare doesn't do what we want. The info list. Okay. So features is just the list of things you can be. Um, okay, feature P, T1047, do you have the property of being even? Probably not. No. Do you have the property of being a matrix? I don't think that's a 
No. What? Yes, you do. A list. But I don't think those are actual valid properties, so it doesn't work. Okay, blah, blah. App list. Non-scalar. Uh, okay, this is getting ugly. Okay, what properties do you have? Didn't we just do that? Um, pop bars, pop bars, put. Oh, wait, what? Removes properties associated with atoms, scalar p. Uh, fun for facts, I don't know what that means. Assume, okay, this is actually more prologue-like stuff here. Forget is, oh, hang on, is could be useful. Um, maybe not. Okay. We will use the args function, sadly. Um, so T1047 is this sucker. Oh. I see it, because it's a matrix, and the args are literally what's in the matrix. So... And the question is, is this a list? And the answer better be yes. Okay, good deal. So now we want to select, we're going to kind of do this, um, in the case of transfer, um, okay, so the sublist of the list that meets this criteria, there we go, and then, ha 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 ha, we can make it a matrix again. So this basically turns it into a list so we can filter it and then turns it back into a matrix. Um, unless I screwed that up. Column one. Oh, crap. Do I need another transpose there? I think I do, actually. Uh, and I need one level of flatten. So that didn't quite go as well as I wanted. So sublist arrows. Let's see what this is. This should be... Okay, so that looks pretty good. Now, do I want to do a flatten on that by one level? Because I don't want a nested list. Okay, that's too much of a flatten. Okay, so flatten just does flattens all the way. So that's not what I want. So flat. Ah! So this is the sublist. Now the problem is, what is element one of the sublist? Okay. So the problem is the length of this is, I think, just one. No, it's not. Okay. So we're fine here. We have a, um, and then we can convert this to a matrix. God damn it. And flatten that. I don't think that's going to work. It didn't. Okay. Now if I transpose this matrix, yeah, I get the feeling this is not the. Um, this matrix is nested one level too deep. But maybe. That's okay. Um, so this will be T1609. And then we're going to try doing this to it. Do I get the feeling uh, something is a little bit off here? Aside from the fact that I can't cut and paste. Okay, so T1609 is this. Um, yeah, see, the problem is this should, oh, yeah, it's, it's a three level list when it should be a two level list, but I'm hoping maybe, uh, L squares estimates can handle that. Um, yeah, didn't care for that. Invalid index of list or matrix, yeah. Now, interestingly enough, I could, in theory, do 
this, because that is actually how the elements look, but I get the feeling it's not going to let me do that. Um, um, no, I, and I think it's because it didn't understand that. Um, so what can we do about this? Let's see, T1609, transpose, matrix, uh, Okay, so there might be a flatten command that only, fla if I flatten this, unfortunately, I think I, it flattens out too much. Uh, or it doesn't work at all, actually. So hang on one second here. Um, okay, so this is nested too deep by itself. Let's just take a look at the sublist here. Okay, so the sublist... Uh, this is a list of 93 elements, I think. So it looks like it's a list of one element that has 39 elements in it. Um, so let's see if we can do this, and then what is, like, element four of you? Okay, well, okay, so this is correct then. Um... So every element of you is a two call. I don't think I can transpose you as a sublist. That probably won't work. Oh. I can, and it turns you into a matrix. Uh, uh, actually, this might be okay. No, because each of these now has two little thingies around it, and what we actually want is, um, yeah, okay, I think I see what's wrong. Okay, so now this is just a bunch of, this is fine, 12, 1, okay, this is good, this is a, um, This is a list with 104 elements. No, fewer than 104 elements in it. Um, if I turn it into a matrix, it becomes a list where each column... So we have a bunch of columns. We want to transpose of that. And this... I mean, somehow we got extra, can we map flatten onto each element? Oh, booyah. And that's what we want. So now, okay, create the orgs, find the sublist that matches things are bigger than zero, convert it back into a matrix. Oh, actually, hang on, we probably don't need to do that. So let's be careful here. So we have sublist. Um, and then, I, I think we can just go here from, um, so sublist, um, wait, sublist, um, transpose automatically turns it into a matrix, and then map flatten across it. And viola, we have what we want. Okay, a little bit ugly, but quite tolerable. Okay, and then we should be able to run this basic, um, this basic regression on it. Okay. Um. Hmm. That would look a lot better if I knew what the hell it w actually was. Oh. 
Okay, so according to this... Um... Okay. So we'll call this T1615. And then for T1616, I guess it'll be F1615. Um, we're going to do the substitution that we did before. We're going to substitute... Well, first let's get this real quick. And... Um, ah, I'll put a float on it just because... It gets really ugly for me if I don't, although it doesn't matter to Maxima, of course. Okay, so we're now going to substitute T615 into A times, um, did I use, log is log of, really? I think it's log base E, but I want to make sure. Yeah, it's log base E. Okay. So A times, is, what is it, percent E? Uh. Yep. Percent E to the B. And this should give us the equation of approximation. Um, or it shouldn't. Let's see what we did wrong here. Okay. I don't think I've defined A or B. I have not. Unless this needs to be parenthesized now. No, no. I mean, we could also call this, um, is there an exp exp function? Uh, maybe. Oh, there is an exp function. Let's use that instead. That's a little bit cleaner. Okay. And that should not be happening. Um, no, no, there's something wrong here, I think. Um, yes, sorry. Um, oh, yeah, totally way off. Sorry. So this is going to be exponential of A times X uh, plus B. Because Y is going to equal the X. That's what I meant to do. I'm a freaking moron. Um, and that's what the approximation function looks like. And we should probably call it that. Call that F1618 of X equals this. Except, of course, we mean set equals. Okay. And now, just for fun, let's plot. Before we do anything else, actually, hang on. Yeah, F1618X of x, x, oops, x goes from 1 to 104. So even before we do anything else, that is the exponential approximation function. Seems a little bit high. And then we can do f deaths of x. See the real one. Dun dun dun. This shouldn't take this long. Okay, so it does look like the exponential function sort of runs off a little bit uh, higher than the actual rate. Um, and part of this may be because if you look over here, you're going to see um, a very low numbers. Okay, it is Pomodoro time, back in two and two.
Okay, hello, Kevy One. We are almost back. And we're back. Hello, hello, Kevy One. Sorry you caught me on the Pomodoro break. Uh, but hopefully you stuck around. Um, so what we're trying to do here is, is do the exponential comparison of the death rate to the actual death rate, but I forgot about the fact that uh, there were no deaths the first 12 days or so. So this is actually what I meant to do earlier. And again, the, um, the estimator function runs off a little bit faster than the actual function. But now, what if we do with the y-axis is a logarithm? It should look a lot nicer. Um, and here you can see that this is actually a pretty good linear approximation of the actual log function. Um, now there's a problem with what I just did, I think. And by the way, Kevy, feel free to, whenever you're there, talk, let me know. Uh, I'm just killing time until, uh, till I, there we go. Oh, 12.22 a.m. and I have an exam tomorrow. Uh, so that is uh, eight hours ahead of where we are, um, two hours ahead of Greenwich time. So you must be, I think you told me where you were from, um, Germany-ish, mid-Europe mid somewhere. Um, but, but okay, that's cool. Hang around. If you have any questions, want to change the subject, anything, let me know. The Balkan states. Cool. I don't even know what those are. Let me find out. Um, so it's, it's one of the, let's see, um, Albania, let's see, oh wow, uh, well, if you want to, you can tell me where in the Balkan states you are. Albania, cool. I've heard of Albania before. I don't remember where I've heard of Albania, but I have heard of Albania. It might be like one of the alphabetically earlier countries in the in the COVID list, uh, which is not a great distinction, but you know. And again, if you have any questions, comments, want me to change something, want to talk about something else, let me know. I'm just sort of curious. Oh. That was weird. Oh wow, I think I just numerically crashed it. Um, okay, that was kind of weird. Um, a VPS and RDP. Okay, a VPS is a virtual private server, um, and an RDP is remote desktop protocol. Uh, RDP is how you would access a uh, Windows VPS. So the VPS is the actual machine. The RDP is like the protocol, like SSH or Telnet or uh, WW or like the web that says what method do you use to get to your virtual machine. Hope that was helpful. Hmm. 
Oh, thank you. I'm glad. I'm glad I could help. Um. Okay. And normally, with a Linux machine, you would use SSH. Uh, you wouldn't use RDP. Um, RDP is really only, and RDP is sim similar to VNC. VNC and RDP are both ways to access remote machines graphically. Um, and RDP, I would think you would use with, I think Windows still uses it. Um, I think Mac still uses it. Even Mac OS X, you can RDP. And um, Linux, you can do it, but um, again, it's not, it's not usually done with Linux. Look at something real quick. So this is this, and now if I had an actual value called it R zero or something, the maximum, the difference would be estimated. The maximum of the square difference would be indicated like this. So I've got a bunch of those summed together. Uh, minus R. R would be the data points. Uh, I. I goes from one to twenty. Whoa. Okay. Uh, HTTP is unencrypted web, unless you meant both of them together. HTTPS is uh, encrypted web. SOC four and SOC five are proxy servers. Um, so if you want an other machine to do the work for you, if you want like to use a VPN or something, which is not the same as a VPS, a VPN, um, the way you would connect to a VPN would be through SOC 4 or SOC 5. SOC 5 is the better of the two. Um, and usually th we talk about that with a, uh, with a VPN. Um, so a SOC 5 proxy... Um, Uh, da, 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 da. Okay, so basically, um, SOX5 proxy means you basically have the other machine make all the requests for you. You send your request to the machine, and the machine sends the request out to the internet, and then it returns it to you. Um, yeah, packets between a server and client using a proxy server. Um, so this is exactly what a proxy is. If this is your IP address and this is your VPN's IP address, the place that you uh, that you go to will think this is your IP address. It won't see this your real IP address. Um, Kim. Okay. Um, okay. And I get SOX4 is the predecessor to SOX5. Um, HTTP proxies are much worse. You don't really want to use them. You want to use SOX4 or SOX5 where you can. Um, and so it's pretty much, it's pretty much a, a SOX, the SOX system of proxies HTTP proxies are slow, but unfortunately, I think any any proxy that you use that goes through another machine to get your data, because you're basically making your request to that machine, that machine is reaching out, getting your data, uh, and then it's sending it back to you. So I think any proxy you use is going to be fairly slow. And, ooh, this is my IP address, by the way. Um, and my ISP is Comcast Cable, which is true, or Xfinity, as they like to call it. Um, okay. Um, right, and the VPN cannot be faster 
to auto log into a website. That's that. Okay, yes, yes, you can do that. That's a little bit different than a standard proxy. Um, do you mean that the proxy uses like some stolen credentials to log into the website, or it uses your credentials, but it happens to memorize them so that you don't have to um, you don't have to remember? Okay, it uses stolen credentials. Yeah, uh, there is um, there is a site that does that. Let's see. Um, there was an actual site that basically. Um, Uh, let's see. Well, these are all probably pretty good tips about how to do it. There wasn't actually a whole site. Uh, maybe that's it. Uh, oh, well, this is actually a little bit worse. Um, yeah, this is... Um, okay, that, that is, that, that's good. That, that works too. But there should be, there should be a site that just basically lists a bunch of passwords. Um, yeah, um. Unfortunately, I can't find it. It might not work anymore, obviously, but there used to be a, a place where you could basically give it a site name and it would tell you, here's a password that's sort of a public password that anyone can use. Um, uh, this one? Okay. Um, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, and they would have that too, but they would actually create it as a public account uh, just so people could go in and look at... Um, some sites just require you to have a password even to read anything. So they would give out free passwords uh, that they created, not stolen ones, but that they created for everyone to use. And there might be a site. Oh, here it is, Bug Me Not. So um, this is where people... Oh yeah, I mean there there's I mean if anyone's smart nowadays, if you're using basic authentication, yes, it's very easy to crack that. However, a lot of sites now use hashed passwords, which means they don't store the password, they store the hash of the password. So you'd have to reverse the hash to find the password, which is difficult. Um but this site here basically um you know, and this people will just share passwords Usually, if you just want to get in and take a look at something, as opposed to um, as opposed to hack into anything, this is more like, oh, I want to look at, you know, I want to see what the site's about without having to sign up for it. Well, this is how you would do that. Um, really? Now, see these Hulu and Netflix and all of these, you would not want to share passwords for uh, because. That's, I mean, that's actually a service. I've heard that. I don't know how many of them are any good, though. I mean, if you go there, and have you ever tried them? I mean, if you have, and it works, that's kind of cool. But uh, let's see what Spotify.com. Um, so, you know, here's some Spotify uh, logins, passwords. Uh, but again, they're pretty old, and they don't always work. Okay, cool. I didn't know that. Um, I did not know you could you could get into all that stuff. Um, okay, so Netflix are not going to give you Instagram. They might actually. Instagram, yeah. So you know, in theory, you can go to Instagram and log in with one of these. Um, well, you're smarter than I am then. Um, so you can get free movies and stuff from Netflix. That's pretty cool. And I assume you use a VPN or something to keep yourself safe. Or Netflix just doesn't care. Um, um, 
Okay, RDP doesn't really fit into the uh, concept of stealing passwords, unless you mean you can R desktop into someone else's machine, and that machine has, uh, you know, has a link into, um, lets you connect to Netflix and stuff. Um... Uh, I have never really tried this. I mean, maybe I should get back into this sort of thing. Uh, and 99% of the time, you probably won't get caught. Um, okay, okay. That's not a bad idea. Now, if, if the people who own the VPS uh, rat you out, you're in trouble. Um, because they know where you're connecting from. But uh, I actually have a cloud VPS, too. I have one from D DigitalOcean that I've even connected to on stream. But I use it more to uh, store websites and data and stuff. I don't use it to, uh, I mean, I sometimes use it to obtain data, but the data I obtain is, is legal. So a uh, little bit of a difference there. Um, uh, so you would actually make a pretty, you could make a pretty good stream out of this stuff if you wanted to tell people how to do all this, how to hack around. Um, I try to avoid it. I try to actually focus more on free entertainment stuff that's free, because I, I want to encourage people to put out stuff for free, um, and not necessarily uh, steal from people who are not putting stuff out for free, if that makes sense. Could just be me. Um... Never touch PayPal, eBay, and Amazon because you think those guys have tough protection on them. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, I'm sure they, they, uh, they're, I didn't know they were easy to get, but uh, I'm going to ignore Pomodoro because we have a guest in the chat. Um, yeah, I mean, you would think that pretty much everybody's going to try to protect their property like that. Um, so unless you go through a VPN, sorry, yeah, private VPN uh, that you trust. Uh, and then, of course, the problem is at some point you have to get the money and unless you're using Bitcoin or something, it's it's easy to trace where the money goes or where the goods go. Uh, if you ever want to like buy something physical or take money that's not Bitcoin or some other sort of encrypted money, um, you you do. Uh, oh, that's so you're for someone who asked me what a Sox Five proxy was. Uh, you're pretty smart. You seem to already know what they are. You know how to do them. Um, uh, so you, so you, you were just teasing me, weren't you? Interesting, interesting. Um, I mean, that's kind of what Tor does, the, the onion router. It has more than one proxy. It connects you to like three or four of them. Um, 
But if they give you one per account, how do you get gather the other ones? Um, okay, I, uh, I, I guess I'm confused. I don't fully understand what you're doing here, but you sound pretty darn impressive. Okay, but oh, you're saying that every time you log in, they give you a different Sox 5 proxy, not the same one. So you log in, get the proxy, log out, log in, get the proxy, and keep doing that until you've built up a list of Sox 5 proxies? Is that what I'm understanding you're doing? And I just realized I'm doing this whole thing incorrectly. Oh, so you have a group of accounts. Um, if you have a group of accounts, though, is it really an issue? I mean, why would you want to... Um, if you have a bunch of accounts, you don't want to use the accounts directly just in case something happens. You want to grab the Sox5 proxies and use those separately from the accounts. Pretty darn clever. Okay, so in other words, you're basically, so what they're giving you are Sox5 proxies that don't have usernames and passwords um, and, and stealing those from them so you don't have to use your account data to actually get to the proxies. By the way, hello, Milkister Moo, how are you doing? Good to see you again. Uh, I missed you. Uh, yes, yes, I really missed you. It was it was tragic. I was weeping. Um, this is all off stream, of course. After I streamed the first time and before I streamed the second time, I was weeping. Oh, I I wish Milkister Moo were here. I feel so lonely and decrepit. Ooh. Oh. 
Uh, yeah. I mean, well, they don't really. I mean, it really depends on how easy, how badly they have their SQLI, they have their SQL set up. Um, sometimes you could hit it with one command and, you know, get their tables like that. But um, if it's a more sophisticated attack, it can take longer, obviously. If, if, if their SQL server is pretty well protected and you have to find a back door, that is a little bit different. Okay. Okay, so what I've been playing around for those of you who are actually uh, who are watching the uh, the screen is I'm trying to see if there's a way to uh, use calculus to figure out what values of a and b are optimal in terms of making this uh, difference minimal. And as you can see, they're pretty ugly. Um, they might not even have a closed form solution. Um, and that appears to be the case even in fairly small systems where there's only two points to match. Uh, you obviously want this derivative to be zero, this derivative to be zero, this to be zero, and this to be zero. So you have four conditions of things that have to be zero, and they're only met when this weird condition is true. Um, in fact, I think even with one point, you're going to get sort of an ugliness there. Oh, actually, that's not too bad. Um, and then if the value of A that you would need here is log R1 minus B, which means B would have to equal um, log R1, which I'm going to call it just like this, minus log R1 minus... Actually, I think that's a redundant equation. Yeah. Um, so that's the derivative of A is going to be like this, and the derivative with respect to B has to also be zero. Um, okay, that, that makes sense. Um, but apparently the moment you add a second parameter to this, it gets flippin' ugly. Okay. Okay, so I could not get a good estimate to this. It doesn't, it, the data is too ugly for that. I could get a reasonable estimate to this, and it did show that the, um, so what this actually shows is, um, and we actually plotted this earlier, let me plot it again real quick. Um, And here you could see the uh, the plot of the um, actual deaths to the estimated deaths. The blue line is the estimated deaths. The red line is the the actual deaths. Uh, and this is on a logarithmic scale, which it kind of, which is why it looks very linear here. Okay. I'm gonna put that one down as my in a. Um, I'm not gonna actually plot it every time we load this file, but it is sort of a nice thing to know. And this B value here uh, means an increase uh, per day of, hang on, oh, I'm sorry, A is, sorry, 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 A is the value that, E to the AX, that seems a little bit too big there. So this is saying we have about 11.6% increase uh, in, in deaths every day. Um, so that's how that's how that would work. Um, so now the next question we could ask is we have um, la, 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 la. so T sixteen oh nine is just the list from days twelve through one oh four when there actually are deaths. But now what if we wanted to sort of say, well, we're actually more interested in, like, let's say the last week instead of all the days going back that far. Um, can we trim this? 
um, to take just the last seven elements, for example? And the answer to that is hopefully yes, because I'm going to try doing that now. Uh, not take channel. Not take inference. Okay, hang on. Um, oh, actually, I think... I think... This is not going to work, though. I think we can use the last N, but I get the feeling we can't do it on a matrix. So give me the last four rows of N. Oh, that did work. That's very nice. Calculus is... is no, calculus does other stuff with data. Um, visualization is more like plotting. Calculus sort of determines maximums and minimums of functions, like, you know, where does a given function take its minimum or its maximum? Um, and, you know, what, how much is the area under the curve? Uh, how much um, that's, or, you know, solids of revolution. Uh, integral and differential calculus, or the slope of a line, lots of other stuff, but visualization is not what calculus is about. Uh, calculus is about um, is about doing mathematical operations on uh, functions. Uh, visualization is something totally different. So now let's say I wanted... Let's see. So instead of um, the whole thing, let's just look at the last week. For the last week, um, how much of an increase have we had in deaths? And this would be exp of this. So, so lately our, our increase per day is about down to 8%. Um, and now another thing we can look at here that we haven't really looked at yet, uh, this is the number of deaths per day as opposed to the, the, the cumulative deaths per day. We can certainly plot this. Um, I think this will work. Nope. How did I plot the other one? Um, um, oh, wow. Oh, yeah. Wait. Oh, wow. Apparently, even with this, I had to give it a... Um, I had to give it a counting function. Uh, so, I guess let me do that. Okay, so plot2d. The word discrete. Days, which here will just be make list of i. i goes from 1 to length d deaths, comma d deaths. And I don't know if that's going to work. Um, I mean, calculus is symbolic as well. Like, um, the derivative of x squared is 2x. Uh, so if you mean numbers and letters, that's kind of true of, like, all math. But um, calculus is about functions and, and variables and stuff like that. Okay, so this is basically the number of deaths we're having. As you'll notice, we, we kind of reached a peak here. Um, we're no longer at the peak. We're now sort of going down here. Uh, this kind of looked like it was being a little bit linear here. Um... I don't know if that's going to continue or not. Um, now, the thing we were trying to do before the... By the way, feel free to keep talking. I'm just filling time here uh, between questions uh, on the chat. Um, so the thing we were trying to do earlier here was create a block, f create a natural function uh, like this, and it didn't work. Um... So let me try this. I'm going to try it right from scratch. And I think it'll, it'll take the function. And then if I give it a natural list and say, show me a second-degree polynomial that fits this, uh, it's not going to work. 
and we're trying to figure out why it doesn't work. So let's try this. So we're going to say, um, we're going to start with saying list equals one, two, three, four. Nope, can't do that because it's colon. N is equal to two, colon. Okay. And then we said poly is equal to this. That is correct. HTTP does not, HTTPS does. That's the big difference. Okay. Okay. Now, HTTPS uses a public key encryption, uh, which means uh, the server tells the client, here's how to encrypt data for me. And then the client encrypts it in that way, and then the server, when it gets it, it decrypts it. So public key encryption means you encrypt data in such a way that um, anyone can encrypt it, but to decrypt it, you need to know like a secret. And generally, it's by multiplying two large prime numbers together. Um, you give people the product of the two prime numbers, but to decode it, you need to know what the original prime numbers were. Uh, it, it's basically based on the fact that it's hard to take a large number and, and uh, if, you, if you take the product of two primes, uh, it's hard to determine what those two primes were just from the product. That sounds like a very strange thing. Um, mathematically, it's not a problem, but computers seem to have a difficulty with it. That's, um, that's um, NP versus P. That, that, so that's a non-polynomial time problem. Um, so that's, that's public key encryption. So let's see. So coefs equals that. Okay, no. Okay, it is Pomodoro time, but I'm going to ignore it. Okay, and so the question is, why does this not, oh, okay, well, that's, that's definitely not working. Okay, so matrix indexes list is this, it's transpose is this that looks correct okay That's just strange. Um, all right, let me try this. So this should give me a matrix. Good. Um, And then I'll call the columns x and y. Say y equals a times x, solve it for a. OK. Clearly doing something wrong here. Let me take a look at a working example. I mean, that's one way of doing it. That, that's the essentially what, there's many ways to do phishing, but the general idea is you fool someone into thinking that they're on a valid web page, like for Bank of America or for you know a bank or whatever. And then uh, basically 
when they type in a username and password, uh, you intercept it somehow. You could use PHP, you could use Perl, you could use a lot of, you could use Node.js if you wanted to. Uh, but whatever it is that you use, the idea is that yes, you make it look like a real web page, or you send them an email form saying that they've got to fill out some data, uh, or basically you try to fool them into thinking that you're writing to them or c com commun communicating to them from their actual bank or whatever, so they'll enter their username and password, and then you can intercept it. And it is very common. Phishing comes up all the time. Uh, lots of ways of doing it, but yeah, lots of phishing, uh, lots, of, lots of scams on the Internet. That's one way of doing it. Um, you know, sometimes they'll even call you and say, I guess, I don't really know. Um, I mean, a lot of the people who do the phishing, a lot of scammers are from India, but you have to also remember that India has a lot of people in it. So does China. Chinese also do a lot of scamming, but again, that might just be a population thing. Um, it doesn't necessarily mean that they're, I mean, maybe they're bad people, but uh, it doesn't necessarily mean that they're bad people. It just means there's more of them. So, um, and they're, they're sort of also in poorer countries. Like the 419 scam are associated with Nigeria, um, Ghana, and other portions of Africa. Um, and these are the people who, you know, um, and people in the United States do it too. But, um, but, but the, I guess the people in these poorer countries, even if the scam doesn't succeed as well, they get enough money to make it worthwhile for them. Um, yeah, that, that is actually one of the more difficult things about, I'm guessing, um, being a Chinese scammer. They do have a lot of, uh, of web blocks. They have a lot of blocks so you can't get out to, uh, you can't get out to the rest of the world. Um, although, I don't think they do it the other way. I don't think they object to people connecting to them. They object to their citizens connecting to the outside world. So it could be a one-way kind of block. Um, and that might be why they're so good at, because they can create servers and have people visit them. Uh, they just can't go out and visit other people's servers. But that, that could be it. I'm not, you're asking a lot of questions about hacking and there's nothing wrong about hacking or cracking. It's an important skill. It's important to do. Um, I am really trying to avoid doing that too much. Um, I'm trying not to be, you know. Ooh. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like I said, I can help you to a point, but um, I'm not the best person to do it. I'm not an expert on it anymore. I'm not saying that I ever was. Um, and I'm also a little bit hesitant to do it now because um, people are getting tighter about security. So you want to be a little bit more careful nowadays. Um, and, you know, if you want, you can go Google pen testing. Um, that's the magic word, penetration testing. Um, and, and see what they have to say about it. Um, and it sounds like you know more than I do already because you're ask me questions and then you're showing me that you know a lot more than I do already. So um, I, I don't think I can help you. You might be able to help me, but I'm not moving in that direction right now. Although I totally do, I'm not, I'm not opposed to it. I do understand it has a need uh, and security is important in computer science. Oh good, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, you're using probably um, Nessus or Satan, or I mean, there's uh, Nessus and Satan are really old. NCAT. <coughs> I assume you mean you're using Kali Linux to do the test. NMAP, that's what I meant. And NCAT and NMAP. Um, I assume you're using Kali Linux as your uh, the machine that does the testing, and the, usually the websites you're trying to bra break into. A lot of them will be running Windows. Um, that's a major server. Some of them will be running Linux, but Windows is probably easier to break into because they have more vulnerabilities and people tend to patch the vulnerabilities less often. Is again my guess. Um, Okay.
Okay, so what am I doing wrong here with um, this? Well, actually, hang on. With with this. Why doesn't it like this? Let's see if we can figure this out. Um, I mean, let's do AX plus B and then have A and B over here. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, a lot of the Windows machines have a lot of flaws. Uh, Microsoft tries to keep up with them, but eventually they retire products, but people keep using them. Um, so is this just an evaluation question here? No. Okay. If you have any ideas about why this isn't working, do let me know. Um, but Windows has a lot of errors, and you know we have like day zero patches come out. Not everyone patches it. They do end of life things, but people still continue to use them, so they're using vulnerable systems. Lot, lots of um, computer security is, there's definitely a lot of room for improvement there. So why the hell does this work? Ooh, hang on. Okay. Hmm. Something has gone very wrong. Let's try this again. Oh, did I forget to do the loads here? That might be it. Yeah, that might be the whole problem. I do need to load the Elsewhere's packages before I can do anything else. Uh, so that might be why I'm having these issues. Um. Okay, so now does this sucker work? Alright, so given a list like 1, 2, 3, 4, Show me the best second-order polynomial. Ooh, nice. Um, one, two, three. One, four, nine, sixteen. Yeah. Oh God. Um, I I use Linux, so I don't use an antivirus. Uh, Clan AV is one you could get for Linux, but I don't, I don't use it. I don't think I need it. Uh, Norton is pretty good. Kaspersky is not bad either. Um, although I think that's the one some people think the Russians have infiltrated, maybe. I don't know. Um, there's also, let's see, Clan V, Norton. There's also some free ones like, um, I can't remember their names. They basically look for spyware on your machine um, and look for viruses on your machine. So. Again, I'm not going to express an opinion there because I think you should be using a system that's open source. So um, the virus uh, is um, kind of irrelevant for me. Okay, so uh, the antivirus is irrelevant for me. So now we have L squares estimators, and that's that list. I'm going to go ahead and BC Gitify this before I forget. <coughs> Excuse me. Hmm. Again, you're asking me a lot of questions about hacking, which I don't, not anything wrong with it. But it's not really in my interest right now. It's not what I want to be doing. Uh, transforms, da, 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 da. No, 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 no. Okay, so this is the... Um, okay, and then this... We should be able to... 
and do a substitution, if I can remember how, so we can substitute this back into poly, and I think that's a return for us. Um, wow. I think you can just ask me about all the things I know nothing about. Uh, deep learning is an attempt to make a machine um, look at and understand data by using uh, training models. So, um, you know, actually I know so little about this, I'm not sure that I want to get into it. But like, for example, <coughs> excuse me. You set up something like a neural network, which is very flexible, and then you have it um, try to tell you if a given picture contains an image of a dog. Um, and basically it keeps tweaking itself until it gets pretty good at determining what a dog looks like. But actually, you would be better off Googling than talking to me. Um, Excuse me. Um, so this is this is again. I'm a very simple programmer. I program steady things like this. And if I'm lucky, this will actually work. Ooh, not lucky though. Now, if I'm lucky, this will work. Um, um, oh, you mean what I'm doing? Why, thank you, it's very kind. It's not really that hard, but I mean, um, so how does that best get best approximated by a third degree polynomial? Okay, interesting. Um, So now what I could do here is f of x equals percent, and then f of 1 should be close to 1. Um, by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And I will try to make, so this should become really, 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 really. Okay. Uh, let's try that again. F of x, oh shit, set equal to I always forget the colon. This and that shouldn't be taking that long. Okay, let's try that again. List of poly f of x set equal to percentage, semicolon. Oh, maybe I missed one of those. Um, does percentage not give me the last thing in the, in the list? Okay, maybe that's why. That's probably why that didn't work. Um, Oh, I think that's because um, set equal doesn't evaluate its arguments right away. So this is what we want. So this would be <sighs> OK. 
Okay. Mm, something's still wrong. And Mr. Polly. Okay. But that's uh, like a fake X, I think. Damn. Yeah, that's not right either. Um, I think I need the magic. Um, okay, I think I need to do. I think I need to do one level of eval here. Nope, I think that's EV then. I think that is correct. Nope. And the problem, what the hell am I doing wrong here? The, um... l -scores estimates... <coughs> well, um, I don't know what glitch is, so that doesn't really help. Uh, is what? Tell me what glitch is actually. Glitch bots. Um, oh, I've seen this before. Uh, if I understand correctly, anything you run on Glitch will start will go to sleep if you don't visit it often enough. Is that correct? Okay, so you could, from your home machine or your VPS, just have a curl command that runs every five minutes that accesses your application so it never goes to sleep. That would be one way of doing it. And I think I figured out what's wrong here. Okay, that's fine. Um, that's different from your previous question, right? Because your previous question was using glitch uh, unless Glitch gives you a VPS, which I don't think they do, unless uh, if they do, then I need to really look into that. Um, so is this about using your... Okay, so I'm, I guess I'm confused. Are you saying you're using... Okay. So give me a couple of sentences here. But the, if you want to get onto the uh, Discord, let me know. Uh, this might be faster through chat. Um... But I'll, I'll wait for you to type in a, a fuller explanation.
okay to host my bot, but after five minutes, bot went offline and had to, okay, I get that, I gotcha. Uh, so that problem might have been solvable if um, my advice about using curl every five minutes or three minutes works. Um, I gotcha, okay. <coughs> so when you gave up on Glitch because you didn't until just now know how to keep it alive, uh, you went to a VPS and ran Node on it. Gotcha. Proceed. I am now all caught up. Okay, it was nice uh, talking to you too. Thank you for dropping by. And I will see you on the next stream. If, you know, assuming I make it, you never know. <laughs> okay. So it looks like this is... Okay. So what I really want to do is return lambda. Oh, this is going to be ugly. Of x that takes it to this. So I want to return the pure function that has the effect of doing that. Oh. Okay, it's the thing that takes this to that expression. Now, how does that work? Okay. Can I evaluate that at a number? Okay, not quite what I need. Oh, shit. That's not what I meant to do. Okay, so list of poly, given a list. Mm, okay, let's make this a little bit easier. Um... And then we'll just declare f of x equals the substitution. Um, okay. So we have L squares. Transpose matrix indexes list x y poly cofs, and we want to substitute the values that that gives us into poly. That ends off f, and this ends off our block. And I guess that's it. Let's see what this does. Okay. Okay, not quite what I wanted. Um, or is it? Uh, transpose. Um, Oh, shit, I don't return anything from here, do I? And then return F. Let's 
So list of poly one, two, three, seven of second degree. Okay, cool. And now, can I use that and evaluate it at, for example, three? Okay, no. So now if I said g equals f, and g set equal to f, uh, can I kind of not be a sort of. Is there an object copy, or is there a copy object? So let's see if we can copy the output of this to G, and then G will be a, ooh. Copy matrix, copy file. There is no copy object. So we're getting closer here, but we're not quite there yet. Uh, so we've defined a function f. But we we need to do some level of evaling here that we're not getting. Um, so f of x is equal to this. Oh, you know what? Let's just actually do this. Return this and then be done with it. Oh, do we need a semicolon here? Maybe. Ooh, didn't like that. Oh, no, I don't need a semicolon here because I've got this dollar sign here, which stands in place of the semicolon. Okay. Um, so if I do this... Okay. That does not look good at all. Let's see. Poly, um... So in theory... Oh, so what we were returning before was even without the substitute. We were returning this, basically. Um... Why do we have double uh, L squared? Oh, that's to close off the return, and this is to close off the block, and there. So now, oh, I hit an extra return there. So now, so this is where it was, I need to probably restore this now that we have this. What? Come on. L squares estimates, transpose matrix, x, y, oh, 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 oh. And coefs. Yeah. My bad. Okay. And give me a third degree polynomial fitting those. This is I mean now I can do oh shit. Can I though? I cannot because I do not know what the original polynomial looked like. So I actually do need this um So what does substitute do again? Substitute does Right, so substitute this into poly. And then return. So I think this is the closest we got to having it working. Okay. So this is good.
So now, if I want to do f of x set equal, the problem is if I do this, yeah, it's not. It's going to try to do the whole. It's going to try to call list to poly again. So how do I get around that? I mean, previously I did something like this. Didn't work. Okay, so this returns this. Now I should not be able to say this. This should not work. Oh, um, okay, yeah, okay. Set equal to. we need from this? What is the weirdness that is going on here that doesn't like me? I mean, I think it's this, the quote, quote, that we need. Um, is it fun def? So f of x is, that looks fine, f of 3 is, that does not look fine. And, um, What is f of zero then? Who? Okay. Yep, something is wrong. F of one. Hmm. F of two. So these are totally. D Whoa. Did not even like that. F of negative one should really confuse it. Okay. Not a damn clue as to what's going on here, unless I'm just using re reusing the variable x up here somewhere where I shouldn't be. Um, this x and y should be dummies, but let's just make it kosher and make them local. And now, that's a little bit too easy. Better. Um, Getting closer. Uh, so the only problem here is the x is actually um, okay, and here I think we can actually do this. Nope. Well, we could also do this. Substitute in. Um, replace x with y in this. Okay, that's not good. Substitute in y for x in this. Okay, so this weirdness is just because the two x's, okay, now I've got to know, can I actually do, because these are two different x's actually, 
No. Okay. So what is f of x? Okay, good. What is f of y? What is f of z? What is f of 4? Okay, finally. So basically the result I get back is not quite ready to go. It needs one additional substitution. And can we get that in there? Let's see. Um, we probably could. F of y equals, and then just return f. That should work. Let me go ahead and BC getify this. Okay, and so the only, um, so the next thing to do here would be to say, f of z equals substitute z for x in this, like that and then return f. <coughs> okay, Pomodoro time, but I'm going to skip it one last time because I think this will be the last time I'm, I'm going to drop off the stream after this. Um, so let's see if this, if this works, we'll probably drop off stream right now. Whoa, no, 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 no. Not cool. Okay. So substitute z for x in, nope, 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 come back here. In substitute L squares estimate y equals poly co f's in poly. So that's that substitute, there's that substitute, comma, that's the return for f, and this is the end of the block. And let's see if this works, it probably won't. List poly. One, two, four, eight. Give that to me as a thir third degree polynomial. Cool. Not what I expected. Uh, F is equal substitute T with X in. Okay, I do know we need to do this. Oops. We need to run maxima, our maxima first. Then we need to do this. Uh, then, let's try defining this again. Okay. So what this should be returning is a pure function. Can I evaluate that function at x? Okay. So apparently, um, oops, set equal to every time. Do this, and then we will do this. Okay. Now can I s apply that to like the number five? Okay. So can I apply that thing to the number five? No. Um. Okay. So we've gotten somewhere, but not exactly where we need to be. Um, so we could just return um, 
We could just return the raw polynomial, but to actually use it, you have to do one last substitution because of Maxima's weirdness. Okay. Interesting. Okay, so we do have modules. We do have a lambda function, the block function we've used. Float is like doing the uh, what we mathematical calls n. Um, and oh yeah, we were gonna do the. Um, this and I forgot we need the rest of this to do this so let's go ahead and put that in there um, Wow ooh I think I got went too far there okay so we're gonna do last n so Cool. Just keep going with those plots. Okay. So for the last seven days, this is the... Uh, oh, hello again, Milkister Moo. Uh, why you are... I don't t can't tell if you're being sarcastic or not. Um, I, I've done two two-hour streams before, uh, and I've done one four-hour stream before. I don't know if any of it counts as work, though. Um... But now that you mention it, I think it is time for me to, unless you have some questions or comments, it is time for me to, to drop this stream as well. Okay. All right. Thank you, everyone, for watching the stream. Uh, next time we will continue trying to figure out Maxima. Uh, it's not too bad. It needs a little bit of work. Um... Thank you. Not a break. It's going to be the end for the day. That's it for the rest of today. Tomorrow, we'll be back. Maybe. All right. Thank you for watching. Um, going to continue looking at Maxima. We might do some more stuff with Maxima, um, including some planetary stuff. All right. No, nope, I'm not taking a couple of days off. Um, oh, actually, I do. I am taking tomorrow off. So, haha. All right. Thank you for watching, and goodbye.